This episode is brought to you by Simply Safe. So are we supposed to start the podcast? One, two, three. Oh, fantastic. I'm worried about the mic being that close to your boobs. I think I'm okay. Okay. Or I can, oh, you want me to pull it out? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you're loud enough that I think that can be a couple inches away from the dragon. I think I don't even need a microphone. I'm so loud. Pumps, what have you had it with? Okay, I read this story in the New York Post. And what I have had it with is women writing love letters to murderers. And not just any murderer. The murderer of his wife. So... In the New York Post, it said that Alex Murdaugh is getting oodles and gobs of love letters from women. One even said, I'm obsessed with you. <laughs> and here's the deal. Number one, he killed his fucking wife. So his you're kid. signing up to be murdered. He killed his fucking kid, which is the most horrific thing any person could ever do. And he's not cute. <laughs> I mean, not even to mention, I forgot, he's going to be in jail until he's dead. Scott Peterson. Now, he was cute or is cute, whatever. Killed his pregnant wife. So we've got the murder of wives and children. And I've heard Scott Peterson cannot keep up with the bushels of love letters. What's the psychology of that? Like, that you want to marry somebody that's in prison. I don't get it. Maybe that you like men that are unavailable. I guess. I mean, I mean you know, we have bad pickers. A hundred percent. Like, I'm so guilty of so many terrible choices involving a man. But I just want to go on record, the permanent record, that I will never send a love letter to a jail inmate. You in particular have a bad picker. <laughs> and so this is, you know, just when you think you're the worst at something, <laughs> you've got these people that trot out. Right. I've seen on like Datelines and 2020s, these women that actually marry men that are convicted murderers right. and devote all of their time to, you know, helping try to exonerate these men that they've fallen in love with once they're in prison. It's fucking weird as shit. I, I just don't get it. I mean, I know that you can live in denial and think, oh my gosh, he's innocent. But it's like everybody on the planet either watched a documentary about Alex Murdaugh or they watched part of the trial or they read some kind of news coverage of it. Do you remember in the staircase where – like one of the people that was working falls in yes. love with him. Oh my gosh. And then he gets out and dumps her. Well, and then not only is there like pretty strong circumstantial evidence that he pushed the wife down the staircase. Right. And if he didn't, then his other wife previously also right. died for the same nefarious type activity. Right. So you've got two dead ex-wives. Right. But the curveball to end all <laughs> curveballs is he beats off to gay porn all the time. <laughs> Okay, so she knows this. Right. She knows about the gay porn. And then there was the gay masseuse, I believe. So she's abundantly aware of all of this. Right. This is this French woman. And she falls in love with him. And they're supposed to move to Paris. Yak, yak, blah, blah. Of course, he dumps her. I mean, it was just like awful. And I, it's just, it's, I am fascinated by why that would be appealing. <laughs> Because I have picked, I mean, a humzinger of a husband that has required a lot of right. rehab stints. Right. I mean, a really rough di diamond that I have had to shine the shit out of. <laughs> I and, mean, and you've succeeded. And I can't imagine how you shine the shit out of a murderer. No, I, I don't get it. And I can't believe that any woman would... Be interested in somebody that, A, killed their ex-wife, but killed their child. Like, they killed their own children. Sometimes people's dysfunction is so breathtaking. Right. We can either sit and be horrified by it, or we can say, thank God we are fucking crushing life. That's what I'm going to say. I went up 
I went up on the scale of bad pickers. Like I'm no longer the infinity bottom scale. I'm up a few notches because of these women marrying and in love with guys in prison. Speaking of love letters. Okay. In lieu of telling you and the listener what I've had it with. Okay. Kylie brought a DM to my attention, which I interpret as a love letter. (laughs) And after I read it, we'll we'll debate amongst ourselves whether we think this is a love letter. All right. So anti-Christopher 666, get it? Yeah. Anti-Christopher. It took me a minute, but yeah. Anti-Christopher 666 says, I've had it with Jenny's psychotic negativity. (laughs) My girlfriend and I are truck drivers. She listens to your podcast obsessively. (laughs) And this lady is absolutely ruining my life. Jenny needs to stop brainwashing my girlfriend. Listen, I'm 36 years old and can find it highly entertaining sometimes. But my girlfriend is like 25 years old and Gabby is highly entertained by this evil negative influence of Jenny. Everything she says, Gabby starts defending, like the pay it forward thing at Starbucks. We don't even go to Starbucks. We drive a semi truck, but I find myself arguing with Gabby for an hour over pay it forward at Starbucks. And it's because Jenny says it's so. So she sides with her and argues with me. I've had it with Jenny. I hate and love your show. It's funny sometimes and insightful on how women think, but I have to share the radio with Gabby. And when she drives, she gets to listen to anything she wants. So I ask you to include a positive perspective as well. So Christopher, I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for the love letter. Love it. Because I am psychotic. I mean, guilty as charged. Right. And this podcast is called I've Had It. So it has a negative premise to it. Spoiler alert, um, anti-Christopher 666. But I love that y'all are getting entertained and fighting over things that you don't even do. Because Christopher, Gabby could be on drugs. You could have much bigger problems. Right. So fighting over imaginary problems... (laughs) Like stealth Starbucks trips that never take place is a gift, Christopher. Right. Right. It is a gift. And it's a time passer. If you're a long haul truck driver, you got many hours in there with your spouse and the makeup sex after the fight. That's right, Christopher. I mean, Christopher, let's look at the positive. We're we're looking at the positive. Let's look at the positives here. You're fighting with your wife about stuff that doesn't happen. Right. A. You're probably getting great makeup sex in the semi winner winner chicken dinner you are learning a lot about middle-aged women right yes and you're learning how to identify psychotic negative behavior and i'm really proud of you for calling me out christopher right i I love that i love it i think it is a love letter i think it is a total love letter christopher and gabby this episode is dedicated to the two of you and i can't thank you enough I'm flattered beyond anything that you took this much time. Look at how long this letter is. <laughs> Single YouTube, spaced. YouTube, see how long this letter is? This is love. Right. This is love from Anti Christopher 666. And I'd also point out that as much as he's negative about the show, he kind of likes it a little bit. He says, I hate and love your show. Right. That is, that's passion. Right. <laughs> Okay, that is total passion yes. to, because hate is really powerful and love is really powerful. But anti Christopher six 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 has both for right. us, so that is like double the passion, right? Double the fun. He could jump off a building and fly with all that. Fuck yes, anti Christopher, we love you. Thank you for the <laughs> love letter. I'll um, I'll try to be more positive, but maybe that's a different podcast because this one is I've had it. <laughs> There's no mystery going in. Speaking of, I've had it. I would like to welcome everybody to this wonderful podcast of ours called I've Had It. It is a podcast where you can come twice a week and dump all of your frustrations so that you can go back out into the world and feign serenity, contentment, right. and be nice to people. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. We call her Pumps. Um, I think she's still the star of the show, but 
we're getting some Team Kylie stuff, which I'm totally right. into. Totally love Team Kylie. And I saw two that were Team Jennifer. I'm just saying. I mean, w- so I might be. Where's your love letter? I don't have one. So it may be that I am the supporting person. Do you know what wasn't mentioned in this manifesto from Anti Christopher? Me. You. And the opposite of love is not hate. It's ambivalence. It is ambivalence. And he is ambivalent about me. I don't know if it was an oversight or mm-hmm. he just went directly to, you know, the head big honcho. guns, big guns <laughs> over here. Kylie, can you tell us what's going on? So listener, as you know, that Kylie runs all the social media because Pumps and I are way too incompetent to do that. Right. And so she's blown a bunch of this shit up, Right. So she goes over to TikTok, drops a grenade, goes over to Instagram, drops a grenade, and everybody gets all riled up. Mm -hmm. So Kylie, give us a report from the trenches of social media. What's going on in the comment sections and on our accounts on social media? I've actually got a really fun one today. Okay. Alec Baldwin's oldest daughter, Ireland Baldwin, took the time to stitch our TikTok about home births on her own TikTok. Okay. And it's not positive. Okay. Uh, Isn't she pregnant? Did I read that right? Yes. Okay. So she's probably a home birther for sure. To summarize, your podcast, our podcast, has pretty much driven her to think there should be no more podcasts. Oh, like cancel every podcast on the planet? Yeah. Uh But I will say we have a couple people defending us. Okay. That's nice. One user, it's a shitty lunch, wrote, LOL, I love I've Had It podcasts and just binged all their episodes. I think they'll get a kick out of your stitch. <laughs> <laughs> she gets us. She totally gets us. But one person named Mare wrote, I like the clips from I've Had It, but I couldn't get through a single episode. <laughs> Couldn't Uh, get through it. Well, I would say Ireland Baldwin, because I saw a little bit of this and it was like, does everybody have to have a podcast? Does everybody have to have a podcast now? And I would just say, Ireland, does everybody have to have a TikTok? Right. I mean, we can go all fucking day with this, you know? And here's the deal. We're just two women that have an opinion. Right. And this is our opinion about it. Right. If you want to have a home birth, swing for the fences. Yes. Knock yourself out. I'm not losing sleep on it. For me personally, it was a hospital. For me personally, I don't want to hear about anybody's labor and delivery story, period. But also, Ireland Baldwin, we got to come up with shit to talk about. Right. All right. We're pulling shit out of our asses here and we get irritated by a lot of shit, but we're not losing sleep on it. Right. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. Pumps, I am freezing when I go over to your house because you keep it at like Arctic temperatures. Morgue. It's a total morgue, but I am so grateful to have found Jenny Kane and their darling lightweight cashmere cardigans. You can wear them year round. So when I drive out to the suburbs, I look adorable in my Jenny Kane. But listener, that's not all Jenny Kane has. You can get onto their website and their fashion really embodies the California dream. Every single piece they have is classic, minimalist, timeless. I absolutely love Jenny Kane and I've been able to integrate all of their pieces into my entire wardrobe and I can wear them all year round. Find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code HADIT at checkout. That's 15% off your first order. J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com and use the promo code HADIT. Pumps, you know you are an absolute national treasure, the star (laughs) of our show. Therefore, your safety and security is paramount. And thank goodness we have discovered Simply Safe. It's called 24 hour lifeguard protection and it's made possible only by Simply Safe's new smart alarm wireless indoor camera. What's so great about Simply Safe is its advanced motion detection and vision AI, that's artificial intelligence, can sense the difference between potential intruders and pets. So, listener, we have got to keep Pump Safe. And Simply Safe is doing this. If you would like to keep you and your family safe, 
right now, listeners get a special 20% off any Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. This huge offer is for a limited time only for I've Had It listeners. So visit simplysafe.com slash had it. That's simplysafe.com slash had it. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right. So today we have a big guest. She is one third of the Lady Gang. She is she has a new show on CBS coming up called Superfan. That'll be fun. This is Kelty Knight. Kelty, how are you? Hi, hot ladies. Hello. How are you? I'm I'm so good. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm like stress eating Cheerios at 1130 p.m. <laughs> and, you know, that's it. That's all I can say. That sounds like self-discipline to me if you're only stress eating Cheerios at 11. I, I like Thank you. ice cream at 11. If I had it in my house, I probably would right. have gone for that last night. But unfortunately, that's all gone. So I was like <laughs> left with some granola and like, you know, an, a Sour Patch Kid. And a, a <laughs> so Kelty, you know, we um, we like to drag out dead horses and beat them over here at I've Had It Podcast. Great. But there's a lot of fuckery going on out in the general public. And we're here to yes. call it out, analyze it. And then leave it here so that when we go back out, we're somewhat decent people. So in that vein, can you tell us what you've had it with? Oh, my gosh. There's so many things right now. But I would say like my number one is I'm feeling like I have had it with the algorithm. <laughs> the algorithm, whatever you are, whoever created you. Um, it's just like, especially when you're a creator and like you've spent your whole life garnering this little tiny fan base of people who have said, I'm going to follow you because I like what you're saying and I want to hear from you. And then you put your video or your podcast or your TV show up and people, the, the algorithm, whoever the <laughs> fuck that is, is like, <laughs> sorry, is like, um, no, no, no. Just because they said they want to follow you and see your content, we're going to decide if a whole bunch of other strangers on the internet left a comment or liked it in the first 30 seconds before we show it to the people who decided they liked you in the first place. I'm so sick of it because I'm also sick of internet people taking, no offense to us, and we're on the internet right now, but like <laughs> it used to be like I'm a television host and it used to be like when you need your car fixed, you go to the mechanic. When you need to learn algebra, you go to a math professor. When you need a television show hosted, you get a host. Right. But now it's like now. No, no, no. You don't get a host anymore. You get someone who can't host is garbage <laughs> host, but has nine thousand million followers on Instagram. So your brand partners are happy and I'm sick of it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, the algorithm. I mean, it's really, it's really a window into your soul a little bit, like as far as your for you page, right? But then how like you get favored to get likes. So we, when we started the podcast, Kylie yep. was making all these reels, and we were kind of blowing up on Instagram. And then it just like went to a stop, right? And I cuss a lot. And so there was this woman that was kind of stalking us all over like, please quit cussing. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Jennifer to quit saying God damn and dead mm -hmm. all of this just makes me want to say it more, right? <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that she like reported us. So we think Kylie and I have a working theory that we got like shadow banned because we like got yeah. to 50,000 followers and then it like stunted. And Kylie knows how to look at the data. And she was like, no, they're not sharing us anymore. Well, now it's recovered and we're like over 100,000 followers or whatnot. But it it really is like they kind of cherry pick. And then you could have some skunk at the garden party who's pissed off because you say fuck on the internet. And then they have to go tattletale to Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> and then you get put in timeout. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? What about freedom and capitalism? Like, why are y'all doing this to us? No, and I feel like they route you in. Like TikTok <laughs> did that to me. TikTok was like, you want to join TikTok? No, bitch. I don't want to join TikTok. I have four jobs, okay? And a mortgage. And I'm trying to have sex with my husband at some point. <laughs> like, I don't have time to master another social media platform so that I can be important to the world of Hollywood. Like, no, I don't want to join TikTok, but I joined. And then all of a sudden, the endorphins came because TikTok was like, we love you. We love you. Oh, yes. You're at a crazy rate. 10,000 new followers every week. Oh, keep putting out this content. You're amazing. And then it was like, nope, 
we're done. We hooked you. We hooked you in. Right. We made you feel like TikTok. You could be a TikToker. Right. And then we're putting a kibosh on it and we're stopping. And now you have no people seeing your videos, no new followers. And now you're stuck here trying to matter in another space you don't matter in and not having sex with your husband. <laughs> but that's what they do. It's like they give us, you know, a little bit of cocaine and we're like, yeah. yes, this is great. This is awesome. And then they take it away. But yeah. in this vein of algorithms, I think it would be fun to talk about uh, celebrities for you pages. And so yes. I did a little homework here. And so we can all pontificate on these and all elaborate on these. But I just love you so much. <laughs> you. I just love you. I feel like you are too, sorry, just can I just I need to tell you how much I love you. Thank you. I feel you. like Go you're on. two steps away from the Saturday Night Live skit of um, <laughs> Balls. Do you remember Sweaty Balls when they yes. would just sit around and they're like, oh, we're sewing sweaters and the balls were sweaty. Like, but when you just use the word pontificate, it really brought me joy in a special region. Oh, good. Oh, that's oh, so great. nice. Thank so you. So let's, let's imagine Melania Trump's For You page. <sighs> okay. Mm. I'm going to tell you guys what I think pops up on her For You page and then y'all okay, can weigh in. Okay. Okay, first, I think that there are probably ads for discreet vibrators. For that sure. pop up. A hundred percent. I bet there is some hate watching of the Michelle Obama podcast highlights. Yeah. You remember when she plagiarized yes. Michelle? Okay. Maybe there is a Google search for the best out-of-state boarding schools. Right. Except <laughs> then she wouldn't even have the kid as a buffer. And here's my favorite. How to kill your husband slowly without a trace. See, that's what I was going to guess was top of her for you page. How do I get rid of this motherfucker? <laughs> I mean, like the quickest possible way on the planet. But I don't want to get caught. Right. And I want to get the money. Right. So I got to be a little bit discreet about it. And she's really walking a tightrope there. Yes, she is. I feel like she loves shitty reality TV. And like Melania <laughs> is laying awake at night just like, immersed in Scandaval. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's a it's a release for me. So I'm like, she's watching Selling Sunset and Scandaval and the New York Housewives being like, I need to escape from my life. No, no shit about that. Yeah. The Bachelor's where she needs to be. That woman needs to have an affair. She needs to put it on her Instagram page so everybody knows that she had an affair because I think I'd like her more then. Melania having an affair, I could dr yes. I could visit that for like a year on end. Just I mean, just when when Trump screwed Stormy Daniels, right. and she revealed the details of his penis. I mean, Pumps and I talk about it still to this date, right? Like, what about him him having a mushroom cock? <laughs> <laughs> does it say about me that I'm more interested in Melania's like blowout? Like who's doing that <laughs> blowout and how does it stay so puffy all day long? Right. Like, yeah. Is it extensions? Is it back combing? Is she using a hair powder? Like I need a Melania get ready with me. TikTok speaking of TikTok. <laughs> being like, get ready with me to go to uh, Mar-a-Lago and then you know? <laughs> the whole blowout. I love it. That's okay. a great one. Okay. Gwyneth Paltrow's Okay. For you, Paige. I love Gwyneth so much. Okay, I love so her pretty. so much. Okay, go ahead. Bone broth recipes. 100%. Love yeah. it. Brad Pitt videos. Hot. Yeah, he's yeah. hot. Uh-huh. You know he's probably pretty good in the sack, too. I would. He looks like he's got big dick energy. But, um, what's her face? Gwyneth was just on Call Her Daddy, and she said that Brad was like, love of your life, amazing, but Ben Affleck was technically excellent. Ooh. Oh, I didn't even know she dated Ben Affleck. Yes, she dated Ben Affleck. After Brad, I guess? Or before? I don't even remember that era. I, I remember it because I've always I'm loved not a, her. I'm, yeah. Anyway, so just let you know. Technically, okay. you'd want Ben. Wow. Technically. Okay. Perhaps a search on her you, For You page, how to become a successful cult leader. Love it. With the goop stuff. And then finally, is Ozempic gluten-free <laughs> <laughs> it's so good it's so good I mean I don't want to be that person that's like bone broth changed my life but bone broth did change my life please don't hate me and don't be like I'm over bone broth but it really did change my life but here's what I think is she's looking on it she's looking on her for you page and it's like the row it's like all of the brands because she 
at that court case looked so fabulous and Crushed she launched it. this right she launched this whole thing of like the quiet luxury like it is not cool that actually rich people are not wearing like Gucci sneakers and Louis Vuitton track suits and stuff like whoever is wearing right. the really rich people are wearing a bag from the row that has no label, no, no hardware, no anything looks like, could you have gotten a target or is it the row? Like we don't know. And right. actually I think Gwyneth is doing us a huge favor because she's saying like this, like understated quiet luxury of like, you don't see my labels. Well, good. Now I can go to the gap. I can get the rip off of that sweatshirt and right. I can pretend that it's whatever fancy brand Gwyneth is wearing. That's made out of baby angel wing hair and mine's <laughs> made out of like shitty plastic bottles, but whatever. And I can pretend that I'm rich. Like you don't have to have the flashiness, which I love. I just want to tell you, Kelty and the listener that as we're discussing this, I myself am wearing Gucci. That's the first thing I thought of when she did that. Because I would say that I'm a nouveau riche, you know, kind <laughs> yeah, of a trashy riche kind of person. I do love a label. I love that when you're Gwyneth, you know, she can rock whatever she wants to, but I'm really shallow and pretentious when it comes to labels. And I really, really like them. Like no, my, me too. I'm like, I need to walk in with my Dior handbag. So, you know, I mean business. <laughs> Because my face and this hair, like it's not giving um, generational wealth, like the vibe, you right. know what I mean? Right. And you have to have the right vibe. You have to have the vibe like you don't care. And like you mostly only fly private. Like I don't have that vibe. I'm still right. filled and oozing desperation. Right. Same. So I need you to know that I'm desperate, right. but I also was good with my money and can right. buy myself the handbag. Right, right. We're, <laughs> we're only partially thirst trap, got our shit together, ambitious yeah. little whippersnappers with a side of thirst trap. <laughs> just a side. Just a little side. It's not the entree. So my kids, so my husband's worse than I am about labels. He's and the so worst. My kids, when we do Christmas or birthdays, they're always like, please do not buy us any hype beast stuff. And I'm like, well, first of all, what's hype beast? And I figure out that's like label stuff. And then okay. I t I'll tell Josh, my husband, our kids are much better people than yeah. we yes. are. Like they they do not want anything to do with this overpriced, vapid designer shit that defines you and I. And we go shopping together and have this crazy orgasmic bonding experience at the Gucci store. <laughs> And our kids want nothing from there. So if I've done one good thing in life, it right. is taking my horrible, shallow pretentiousness and not projecting that onto my children. I can't believe I did that. Well, it was funny because she called me around Christmas time and goes, I just got Dylan's Christmas list. He wants used clothing. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a young woman who, who works for me and she's one of the no trash people. Like we went on tour with my podcast, my podcast, Lady Gang. We went on tour this fall and we're on a tour bus and like it's just McDonald's and like garbage and shit everywhere. And she's one of those people that does her whole year in one mason jar, like doesn't oh use gosh. plastic, like a no trash thing. She's never bought anything new in her life. Everything in her house comes from Facebook Marketplace. Everything, all of her clothes are used and from Goodwill, like everything. She she's one of those people. And I look at her and I was like, what is it like to not like go on the real real at three in the morning and buy a shoe <laughs> right, that right. you don't need? Like, what are you? I mean, I know I'm paying you garbage fees right now, but like, what are you doing with this terrible salary that I'm paying you? Like, <laughs> right. where does it go? What do you you don't buy anything like it's crazy. But the youths, they really have it. They have that figured out. And I think it's really cool. I think it's so cool. I I'm mean not it. Uh, no, I'm it. not. I'm way too shallow and pretentious. But my children, they totally thrift. They love all of that. And I just think it's super cool. And that generation is just so much more socially aware. Like Kylie, our producer, her girlfriend, Anna, owns a store in Oklahoma City called The Library. And you buy a clothing membership. So you go in and you can like check out your clothes that you need for the week. And then you return them and they launder them. So each week you go and you rent a different piece of clothing and then you return it. It's the smartest thing on the planet. Right. That's so smart that like the reg, the normies, as I would call them, are... <laughs> 
that library is great. And honestly, Kylie producer, you need to get out. You need to make that into a franchise with your girl and get, yeah. you know, get going. Cause that's a, that's a business. Yeah, no, they're sharp and they're just as pretty as they can be. I mean, the prettiest lezzies you've ever seen. I mean, these girls <laughs> and also, are like, darling. This generation didn't fuck with their, they didn't fuck with their face. Right. No, exactly. Pumps. I feel like we're just beacons, not only of mental health, <laughs> but of physical health. Yes. These probiotics from Just Thrive have got my gut in check, but most importantly, your gut in check. I know. It's been a game changer. Spoon free <laughs> up the derriere. Am I right? You are correct. And the dogs are on the probiotics and the Frenchie's gas is getting so much better. But I also love these psychobiotics from Just Thrive because I can tend to be a little crazy. Have you noticed me being nicer Around the podcast set? Yes. Do I need to double my dose? <laughs> Maybe you should take two. <laughs> Listener, if you're ready to take control of constipation, as Pumps has tackled, bloat, stress, and live your healthiest life yet, you can get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive probiotic today. Visit justthrivehealth.com and use promo code HADIT. Let's get back to our algorithm analysis. Another billionaire, Jeff Bezos. Mm. Okay. I envision Rogaine commercials. Mm -hmm. I envision searches. How does a short, bald man keep a hot, sexy Latina woman satisfied in the bed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you guys seen his girlfriend? She is She's hot. She's gorgeous. But I'm sure he's taller and cuter and better in bed when he stands on his wallet. I think there's probably hundreds of billions of reasons to a believe. One million percent. Uh-huh. That he's pretty good in the bed. Yeah. Um, next, I, we envision him probably searching, what is Bill Gates' net worth? <laughs> <laughs> Competition. And then finally, how to destroy shopping malls. Yeah. Done. <laughs> yeah. It's, we're real close. Okay. Let's go down. So I'm going to tell you what, this is what okay. Kylie wrote that she thinks mine would be. So my first one would be a compilation of Rafa Nadal's greatest moments. You yeah. Know, you know who Rafa is, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The next would be French Bulldog TikTok. For sure. Cute. And then uh, Google searches, does Gucci make pickleball outfits? <laughs> <laughs> Cute. And then finally, just the New York Times Daily Wordle, which I'm completely addicted to. I'm in multiple group texts. Right. I, I mean... Before 6 a.m., I'm already kicking ass on Wordle every morning. <laughs> so, Pumps, we envision her going to BuzzFeed and taking a quiz, Am I Gay? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, I love it. Next is Gabrielle Union divorce rumors. I to love give you, to give you love Dwayne Wade. I love Gabrielle Union. I mean, I love Dwayne Wade, but I think Gabrielle Union is like so perfect in every way. She's so gorgeous. It's ridiculous. And she's super smart. So I really Let like me let her. her in on the hook here. Kelty, I believe Pumps is a closet lesbian. Right. And this is that. something we're exploring. So that's why Gabrielle Union is like her number one crush. Cute. Right. So, so third on your list would be women's softball highlights. Th that might be first. Yeah, she loves Ooh, to, she loves love women's, women's softball. softball. And then wow. lastly, an online lifeguard certification course. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> She's making so much fun of me because I was a lifeguard and a swimming lessons teacher when I was in high school. No, I guess it was college. And she's like, you would be the worst because you're a terrible swimmer, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, fuck off. I had no idea because we have traveled together extensively and, and we've been in many, floaty. <laughs> many swimming pools together. And she is like not a good swimmer at all. If I was in the middle of a pool, the last person I would think would dive in and pull me up and perform CPR is this woman next to me. That's because I'd be trying to hold you down, hoping that you would die <laughs> because you're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like it. I like okay. it. Wow. Friendship, you know? <laughs> That's right. Kelty, tell us what's on your For You page. Um, okay. First of all, baby monkeys. Love. Um, love. I have a lot of um, inspirational quotes because I'm bougie like that and <laughs> I'm a basic bitch. Oh, I have a lot of like stars, old face versus stars, new face. So I guess oh, I go good. deep on that content, obviously. I would like that. All right, Kelty, it's time to play our game. Had it or hit it? I'm going to list some things off. You tell Hot. us if you've had it with it 
or if you would hit it. Oh my God. Welcome to Had It or Hit It. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. All right. Harry Styles. Hit it. Totally. Yeah, I think he's darling. I think he's so cute. Kissed me twice. Really? Shut up. With tongue? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, just okay. Just a peck. Okay. A little peck on the cheek. Is he yeah. tall or short? Tall. Oh, really? Good. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. I was hoping he was tall. He's not tall, tall like my husband's 6'6", six, six, which is like huge. You can't find clothes that fit you. He's probably like six foot or 5'11". Like he's he's tall. In heels, he's taller than me when I'm in heels. I read, five, that, six. I love I read that. that you were an NBA cheerleader. And so with your husband being 6'6", six, six, was he an NBA player? No. <laughs> he's a lanky music manager. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Lanky Hollywood guy. Okay. Had it or hit it. You know, the standing walkways in airports that yeah. not escalators, people that stand on them. Um, had it. Yeah. I've had it. It's terrible. If you're choosing the fast lane, choose the fucking fast lane. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> no half assing. Don't choose the fast lane and then stand in the middle when I can't even, it clear. This is actually one of my, one of my things I was going to tell you that I've like, I've had it with is like the ability of Americans to not understand how airports work <laughs> yeah. and how lines work. Yeah. Like in Canada, it's, we're part of the Commonwealth. It's like the Queens rest in peace, like world. And we know how to like, it's your boarding group. Go to the front of the line. It's you're on the moving walkway. Please. It's the ladies literally like, please, if you're standing, go to the right side. And people are just like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh my God, you had one job moving walkway. It's so <laughs> annoying. Agree. I completely agree. It drives me fucking crazy. Airports send me into orbit. So my orbit. Hu- my husband and I love to go to London and we like to take the tube everywhere. And you get on these escalators and the British are so orderly. Everybody knows what to Everybody do. Everybody stands on the right side if you want to stand. I'm a walker. I like to walk. If I'm on an escalator, I'm like, I might as well just move it. There's no reason to just stand there and be lazy. You might as well just keep your heart rate up. Yep. But in America, you can't. You can't. Somebody is blocking the entire escalator with their suitcase, with their fucking Stanley Cup <laughs> on their phone, playing yep. fucking some, you know, casino game and dinging away. And it drives me bananas. In London, you can just troll right past them. So when I get yep. on those moving walkways, I've gotten very assertive and very aggressive, which is hard for you to believe, Kelty. To I'm the right, sure. please. I do. I say passing. I'm passing you to your right, to your right. I'm on your left. I'm on your left. I'm just like, I'm not tolerating this. If you want to stand on this machine, that is like peak laziness. I mean, it's absolutely peak laziness. There's no reason because you're going to get on a plane more than likely fly for two to three to four hours. Go ahead and just like burn those calories. Why everybody is so adverse to walking now? It just really is bizarre to me because from an evolutionary standpoint, we had to walk a lot. And now all of a sudden, everything is like, how can we walk less? <laughs> and it, I'm like, where did this come from that we're as a society trying to walk less? It drives me crazy. And I don't mind if you're walking less, if you stand to the right. <laughs> <laughs> you can crawl. That's you know right. what? That is your deal. If you want to be a lazy slob, that's fine. <laughs> You know, you had a lot going on this day. You're wearing an uncomfortable shoe. Perhaps you have a shin splint. Like, that's fine with me. Just stay out of my way because I'm powering through because I've arrived late yeah. and I need to get to my gate. Yeah. And I need this small amount of cardio. I'm trying to make my steps. And I'm yes. also going to get in line of coffee bean. And I need a full copy before I get on this plane. And I did not. There's no order ahead at coffee bean. Agree. Okay. <laughs> had it or hit it. Twitter. I hit it. I love it. Everyone, please go follow me at Kelsey Knight on Twitter. I have a new show coming out. You're going to Twitter vote. It's going to trend on Twitter. And that's going to save Twitter's the only social media platform that actually reports to the Nielsen television rating. So if you love your show, if you love jury duty or Bridgerton or whatever you're watching and you want it to not get canceled, then you should definitely be tweeting about it. Oh, I like it. I okay. didn't know all that. While you're at it, tweet about I've had it podcast. <laughs> okay, please. <laughs> Next, had it or hit it? Get ready with me. Um, I hit it because it's the easiest content to make and it does the best and people really seem to love it. But you got to be telling good stories. You can't just be like doing the eyeliner. Like I like it as a thing of like, it's like get ready with me is what the blog was 10 years ago where you would like write a blog, like my favorite, you know, household items or 
our our trip to Arizona, like all the mountain <laughs> waters, you know, like I like it. Get ready with me. I mean, I would like to go live in a hut and throw my phone in the ocean and never come back to Hollywood at this moment. Right. Right. But I like it. Get ready with me. And I honestly, I would get ready with both of you. That's so That's nice. so nice. I've had it with get ready with me's. I know. I'm I sorry. just, I know. No, but I appreciate, I like your position on it. I, I think it's good. Okay. Um, gender reveal parties. Well, I hate babies. So um, <laughs> nobody invites me to their gender reveal party. I don't hate babies. I we am do. a we do. childless wonder. And um, I, I feel strongly that I reserve the right to decide if I enjoy your child Agreed. and I will decide, I will decide if I like them when they're five <laughs> and because that is when you have trained them and they have their personality is what it's going to be. And I like for me, listen, there's a couple exceptions, but the blobs, like I'm not into the blobs. I don't understand them. I'm not like excited when you like kind of smile. Like I kind of smile when I'm pooping too. Like, I don't know <laughs> that this is like a sign of us having a moment. I like little children that have the soul of an 84 year old. Right. And if you don't have that kind of child, I'm not interested in being a part of that. <laughs> I, I, I feel you on that. And I like, I'm going to get canceled so hard no, for saying that. No, we're the no, worst we about bash babies. babies all the time. Yeah. I, I mean, episode one of our podcast is called toddlers are assholes. So we, I mean, you're welcome here. Okay, this safe. is safe yeah. territory, but I think kids should be liked on a case to case basis. Anybody who says, Oh, I love kids. It's kind of a red flag for me. I mean, because there's <laughs> a lot of asshole kids running around acting like assholes whose parents think that behavior behavior is adorable and that we're all supposed to think it's cute. Nobody really is doing anything about these kids. I mean, they're just getting all this power. They're little tyrants. And I've had it, Kelty. Had <laughs> Let it. Let me tell you something. I have a great story about kids. Oh, yeah. That, that kid, they get to do whatever they want. I had an intern once when I, this was back when I was working at Entertainment Tonight. Um, I'm at E now, but uh, I had an intern and they were like, here's your intern. And I was like, great. And I had to do an interview with Flo, Flo Rider, the singer, mm -hmm. oh, I yeah. know, barely a singer, but a singer. Um, and I was like, hey, whatever your name is, intern, I'm going to New York. I'm going to interview Flo Rider. I need you to like put together a package of like all of his records, how many hits he has, the career awards, like everything about him. So I can just figure out like where I'm going to go in this interview, like research, you know, so I send them on their way. And six hours later, this girl comes back to my office and she goes, and I said, okay, what do we got? What do we got? Show me, show me what got. She goes, it was just really hard because <laughs> when you put Flow Rider into Google, it just comes up with a lot of stuff about Florida. No, uh -oh. no. <laughs> Shut up. And I was like, Earth is not for you. Someone <laughs> gave you trophies when they shouldn't have. You are an 18 year old person about to graduate from high school or college or whatever. And like someone has done you dirty. They told you you were great when you were not great. This is the most subpar brain shit I've ever seen in my life. And so that's what happens when you make people think that your child is cute and smart when it's just not. You're tapping into something. Yes. I think is not getting enough coverage. And I think you just fucking hit the nail on the coffin. And that is... People are doing their children dirty by telling them how great they are because mm -hmm. then they go out into the real world and it comes crashing down on them and they find out they're mediocre <laughs> at, best, at best, more than likely below average. So then they go back home and their parents are like, oh my God, you're so great, little Billy. You're amazing. You're awesome. And then they go get a job and their boss is like, Billy, you fucking suck. Everything <laughs> about you sucks. Your hair sucks. Your outfit sucks. The way you speak sucks. You send shitty emails. You're fired. And then you find out all these people are in their 20s are still living at home. And I probably would too, if my parents thought I was so spectacular all the time. Sure. But my parents always gave me a pretty strong dose of reality. Yeah, with everything. Too. I mean, my parents did not love me. <laughs> oh. No time for me. And I've never won anything. And no one told me I was great. And that's why I'm highly successful. I'm not successful on the internet, like get ready with me still successful. Right. But right. I'm like, <laughs> 
you know, like a girl that has like a 401k, I call it sexy mature. Like I've got a 401k. I've got my shit together. I got a good skincare routine. I got four jobs. (laughs) Right. I got a couple awards. Like I'm in a nice shoe closet. Like I'm good. I think you're a winner, Kelty. I mean, I would take your hustle and your depth over the get ready with me star any day because there's depth and I'm not interested in having friends that haven't been through some shit. Right. Mm. Because I like friends that have depth. And I think in order to have depth, in order to be a better person, you've kind of been through some shit and you're able to talk about it. Some people have gone through shit and they just sweep it under the rug and haven't grown at all. And those are usually shitty friends. Last but not least, at-home TikTok dancers. So I know you were a professional dancer. So you see like the husband and wife that that have learned to dance and they're doing it together and they put it on TikTok. Had it or hit it? You guys, I feel like you hate me so much. Okay. Um, I also am gonna, I know you're gonna have it with it. I um, am gonna hit it. I don't like, well, here's the thing. Yes, I love dance. So I was really excited when TikTok was really a dancing platform. And I'm very cringy about that now because during the pandemic, I did every dance there was like alone in my living room (laughs) on TikTok. And I'm like, wow, that's really embarrassing now when I look at it. But Here's the thing. TikTok dances are very powerful. They are the get ready with me of television and (laughs) elders. And so I just actually, I know I'm going to ask you guys to do this. I'm putting you on the spot. There's a TikTok Instagram dance for my show, super fan, where you just have to put on a t-shirt of something you love. Like it could be diet Coke. It could be Gucci. It could be, uh, like Garth Brooks, whatever. And you, it's very easy and you do it and then you post it. And then hopefully the song, the theme song to the show will go up the TikTok charts. And then hopefully that'll help the television show get another season. I'm an evil genius. I'm doing like um, <laughs> Will Smith in the nineties. Do you remember when he had a song called men in black? Of yes. course. Comes comes the men in black. black. What yeah. the fuck is that song about? But it was for his movie. Right. It was like a whole 360. And so I'm trying to do the same thing I'm promoting on all channels. So I'm really into the TikTok dances until this show either gets canceled or picked up for a season two, at which that point I will decide if I'm still going to do TikTok dances. Okay. Spoiler alert for everybody. You love them. I love them. I, I do too. This cold black heart of mine, when I see a husband and wife or like, you know, a couple of millennials or a couple of Gen Zers just in their normal clothes in their house doing a little dance, I love them. I, I think it's darling. It warms my heart. I absolutely love it. I'm even, shocked. Even <laughs> assholes, even assholes like me have moments of kindness, Kelty. Wow. I know. Kelty, I cannot thank you enough. You are so fun. So much fun. Bye guys. Thank you. Bye, thank Kelty. you so much. I mean, I think it's kind of fun to envision what Melania's for you page is. Yeah. I mean, I, when you, you took mine though, when you said how to kill your husband. With, yeah. And not get caught. I mean, that I would have to think would be the top over and over and over. You know, apparently when they lived in the White House, they didn't even share a bedroom. I've heard they don't at Merrill Lago either. Yeah. But look at him. <laughs> I mean, would you want to? <laughs> no. no, I don't care no. how cute he is on his wallet. He's a dog. No. And his mouth. I could even take the looks problem before I could take the mouth. I mean, if you duct tape his lips together it's uh be just terrible i feel sorry for listener please send us a voice memo to instagram at i've had it podcast tell us what you've had it with until we see you next thursday thanks pumps so much (laughs) for always being so much fun and a bright (laughs) ray of sunshine we will see you next tuesday and right now i'm going to deal with this cunt (laughs) i was going to just say the same thing about you (laughs) 